Hello everyone. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do the first, my first four lectures of science were proving a specific result. And I've also said, well actually I haven't said, but the more fun part of mathematics is actually building new stuff. Um, so now we're going to do a series of lectures. I don't know how many there's going to be, um, but hopefully a lot. Um, and I titled it From Rhythm to Algorithm Part 1. Well that's the series name and this is Part 1. Um, first thing I want to say is if rhythm was a fundamental physical principle over 600 years that was not properly integrated into physical theory, but it was a principle, how would you know? Well, words like algorithm and logarithm would exist. And do they? Yeah, they do. So, that stinks. 100 years of physics, bye-bye. Um, but, so, what, what we did in the first four lectures is we showed, we've shown quantum mechanics does not have separate laws of physics. I put obviously, because again, forget the past 100 years of, uh, of our research. To think there would be different laws of physics on a small scale is, is, there's no reason to think that to begin with. That's just apes being stupid. But, and we know that, and, and we've proven that. That's done. And where we left off last time is we said rhythm, well, we didn't say but this is new. Rhythm is proportional to smooth movement, and that is evidenced by sound. Think about if you're shooting a basketball, that perfect swish, there's a sound to it, right? That's rhythm, that's placing and timing. Um, think about a golf swing. Wow, wow, Johnny, that, that one looked really smooth. Sounded good. Yeah, that's because rhythm's real. Um, and now, the, the part that gets fun, and the part that we're really going to develop is tension replaces potential energy. Imagine you're in the woods. I don't know, you're looking for grasshoppers, I don't know. <laughs> And you hear a noise, and all of a sudden you're scared, and all of a sudden you potential energy up? No, you tense up. There's a linguistic heuristic right there. Um, and I wanted to make one more direct physical distinction. Um, vibration is distinctly not movement. When we integrate tension as this replacement of potential energy, well, we need to we need to say why vibration is not movement. And to do that, to accomplish that, we were going to develop what's called tension path physics. And simply to demonstrate that vibration is distinctly not movement, look at my marker right here. Is it moving? Well, you might say no. I mean, you might say, oh, it's jiggling, it's jiggling. There's temperature, so we know it's vibrating, but is that movement? Well, you'd say it's not moving. Brad's not moving, the board's not moving, the light over there is not moving, this thing is not moving. Ah, you're wrong. You're on a sphere hurling through space. So it is moving. And we need to, we need to understand both the concepts of universality, which is just the whole universe, and locality. We'll, both, we'll do locality considerations for both geometry and for actual physical systems. But we need to make the distinction that vibration is distinctly not movement. And now, to do all these things, well, we need new mathematics. And so what we're going to do now is we're really going to review the basics of mathematics from the ground up, and we're going to show you things that you've probably already wondered, questioned, and we're going to answer them. So the first thing I want to do is start off with a demonstration. Look at this marker. If I asked you, is this a cylinder, what would you say? So it's kind of a cylinder. It's almost a cylinder. It's more or less a cylinder. Um, and so, what I'm going to try to show you here in this little clip is that the fundamental word you use to do mathematics is inconsistent right now. Um, so up here, I just have a little, a little, little circle that says language and then arrows pointing away. That's simply to, to represent time evolution, right? People, humanity evolved on different continents at different times at different rates. Language spread out, but all language is related. Um, the first, I want to talk a little bit about how I do mathematics first. I have conjugation preserves the dynamic of sound. Let me show you. So when you conjugate, or when you conjugate something, well, I'll get into that differently. But basically, the way I do mathematics is I read stuff, and every time here is War and Peace. This is the book I'm currently reading. Um, and every time I read words, I hear the sounds, all of them, literally all of them. So each page 
has probably between three and eight theorems and probably three to eight what I call dichotomistic pairs. And we'll cover that here shortly. But all words are related, but all words are not related directly. Um, and that's really my point, is that language is vastly bigger than mathematics, not just a little bit bigger. Um, and to show you that we have inconsistency, the thing I did with the marker was simply to show you, I wrote, from efficiency, this was our, this is how we axiomatized physics. We said, here's an axiom, now this is proven. Now we need to describe that physical theory. Well, what needs to be consistent? And so when you're using, you would never say, can I get my marker again? You would never ever say this marker is greater than or less than a cylinder. You would say it's more or less a cylinder. And learning other languages are mas o menos or pu, pu o meno. That's just Spanish and Italian for more or less. More or less. But the, the point is, anytime you see this symbol in math class, you'd say, x is greater than y. No, x is more than y. And you might say, Brad, who cares? Um, you should care. People should, should care about mathematics. But for the consistency of the overall theory, especially for the proper ontology of theoretical physics, that's extremely important. I wanted to point that out because, again, these are, I read this in Thomas Cahill's book a while ago now, but he said, piu o meno is the characteristic phrase of Italy. So, this isn't like some obscure saying. I mean, these are things people say all day, every day. And it is directly in contrast with what you learn in math class right now today. Um, and again, that's how, I, that's how everyone does mathematics, but that's what makes me a little different is I remember them all. And so I just, and we'll get into this. I have a lot of cool things to show you with language, obviously, but I just haven't gotten there yet. Um, but. That right there shows you, you the, the diction you use to describe the relationships in mathematics right now at the most fundamental level is completely wrong. <laughs> um, and then so I, now I've written, what is a dimensionless number? So like I said, I've been doing my derivations for, at this point, almost three years now. Um, so I have had literally tons and tons and tons of theorems and dichotomistic pairs. Um, but on the previous lectures, we, and we're going to derive the dynamic limit later on in these lecture series, but the dynamic limit allows us to derive any fundamental constant. Now, I want to say what, I, ha I simply have the equation for the slope of a line, I guess a line equation up here, and there's a variable slope, variable y-intercept. Um, so now remember with language, language is much bigger than mathematics. Well, where do units come from? This isn't an obvious question why you would ask this, but you need to ask yourself, where do units come from in any mathematical equation to begin with? And it's because you've related something. You said this variable y is related to this variable x. And in the last lecture series, we classified all of the things that could be, you can't just say one and then say, well, I don't know what that could be. It has to be a physical thing. So we've classified those things. And now we need to establish, when you put the equation sign, anytime you say this, you are establishing relation. And not all, not all quantities in physics or mathematics are related. I guess that's it there. But then I also have up here, I said, rhythm, algorithm, and logarithm. Um, would be the evidence of rhythm not being a fundamental physical principle. But this is an example of a dimensionless number. The natural log of E equals 1. 1 what? Not 1 pound, just 1. Um, and again, that's a case of most general. But the reason I show you this is because I've developed a whole mathematical subject called dimensionless analysis where that is what the fundamental functionality of the dynamic limit is. Um, and we'll derive that later, but again, I, don't, I won't be this, probably not in the first video.